Tennessee Wildcast is live on the air with the latest on hunting, fishing, boating, and all things outdoors. Make welcome your host, drummer and outdoor expert novice, Jason Harmon. Well, hello everybody and welcome to Tennessee Wildcast. I'm Jason Harmon, your host, and right next to me is Miss Amy Spencer. We are in Region 1 today. Yes, we are. We're excited to be here. We're on the Hatchie River in Hardeman County, Bolivar, Tennessee. And if you can't notice, it's a little hot and humid today. It's a little hot and humid, and uh, but we're excited to be right here on the river. And it's a little muddy today. We had some high water here recently, but uh, it's nice to be outside every now and again. Yeah, might see some trash float through here. <laughs> yeah, there's been a lot of rain. So um, anyway, we're excited to be here in Region 1 and got a couple of cool guys with us today. We're going to talk about some catfish grabbling. And uh, before we get to that, we want to hit a few current events and talk about what's happening um, across the state. Not a lot going on right now. It's summertime. It's kind of hot. It's a little slow right now, but coming Fishing. up Saturday, August the 4th, is the Duck Blind Draw-Ons in West Tennessee, Middle Tennessee. Uh, that's Region 1 and 2. You can go and uh, try to get a duck blind. Yep. And uh, then we got the uh, Velvet Antler Hunt coming up August the 24th, 25th, and 26th. Yeah. So if you want to take advantage of that, get out there and and try to try to get you a velvet buck. Uh, it's gonna be hot. There'll be a few ticks out. And hey, think about uh, think about this. A lot of people may not uh, have not thought about this. Those velvet antlers are gonna be different to handle than your normal yes, they're, your normal deer. They're, you can't just grab them by the antlers. No, you can't. Drag they, them out. they will move. They're pliable. They will bleed. So yeah. you have to be very careful with those. So we're, we've been throwing around the idea of putting together a video to to educate y'all on that before the season, before the hunt. So we'll try to do that. And uh, Mr. Barry Cross. And those have to be treated day different day. at the taxidermist, too. Yes. And you got to make sure you. Um, you better have some ice. You better be ready yeah, to go. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, all the above. So, anyway, uh, think about that. And also, um, CWD restrictions this year. We got some new CWD restrictions. Uh, the same as far as what you have to do with the animal, but um, all states apply. So, if, yes. come, if you're coming from any state, if you've killed a, a buck, a deer, I say a buck, a deer, a cervid, a deer, elk, moose, etc., you have to make sure you go through the proper import restrictions and that's that, across state Especially lines. with our, in West Tennessee, with our Mississippi and our Kentucky hunters, please, please be aware of that. You know, we've got a lot of questions on Facebook, what if I kill one? Yeah, it does apply. You've got to make sure it is clean before it comes back. And you're, you're going to see some, we're really going to push this message, so you'll start seeing mm -hmm. some more information on it. Yeah, you may even see a billboard you might. driving down Interstate you might. 40 here you in West might. Tennessee. All right. Well, let's get to our guest, and, and uh, I'm going to let you introduce them, Amy, because you know them better than I do, and I'm excited to talk about some catfish grabbing today. We've got Jonathan Sane and uh, Blake Tranum with us today, and uh, I've been with them multiple times. This is an adventure. Uh, I would love to have showed the video when I went with you all, what, four or five years ago? Yep. Uh, but we can't show that. <laughs> Uh, I didn't do well when the uh, fish grabbed my hand. I, I kind of said some things that are not appropriate for okay. the uh, TV, but uh, we'll we went, uh, what today. was it, 4th of July. We yep. went again 4th of July, and y'all caught a 50.1 uh, catfish, yep. right? I mean, literally, we're not far from where you caught it. Yep, we ain't far. It's right up the river just a little bit. Well, we got a little footage of that. If you're watching at home uh, and on Facebook, we'll, we'll show it to you here. But uh, anyway, they... they uh, Pulled a big one out of the water. I mean, you'll see it here in a minute. But uh, how long were you underwater here on this on this this attempt? He was under there about thirty seconds almost. Yeah, so Blake. Blake Blake was under there. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, you got to understand that they'll be on top of the water together. And then what's so funny is, and I want to know, do you all actually talk or do you communicate with this or do you just shove him under the water, Jonathan? I give him a little time. <laughs> I have to coach him a little bit to go get him. Give him some time to think about. That's it. right. That's right. I, I have to be ready because he will shove me. Yeah. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, when we were doing this, a couple of times they would go under, and we got kidding. We knew Blake would be down about 20, 25 minutes, or 25 seconds, and then... Minutes, wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then that one time, he was down there, and I thought, is he coming up? You know, I'm recording this. Is he coming up? Yeah. What's going on? Yep, yep. <laughs> Stop I tape. Had, a few times, I had to go get him. The fish like to keep him sometimes. Yeah, sometimes they get a little bigger than I can handle. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I see y'all using this stick. You got the stick down in the water. Now, what's going on with that? Is it's that to locate the hole? And it's what it is. We find the hole and use that to to hold because of the current. You can slide down that pole, and it uses less effort to stay there and mess with the fish. You okay. Know? Yep. That just makes it easier. Makes it easier. Yep. All right, yeah. Now, explain grabbing, because a lot of people, they don't understand exactly what it is. Well, all it is is you just catching fish with your hands you go down the bank find a hole stick your hand leg in there 
If he's in there, he'll let you know it. Yeah, yes, they do. They will let you know stick that. Stick your leg in there. From I like a, that. Yeah. <laughs> Just stick your leg in the hole. That's It'll right, be all right. That's right. Uh, have you ever encountered anything else other than a, than a catfish in the hole? Well, not that we know of, but there's no telling what we touched and didn't know what we touched. Mm -hmm. What about the snakes, Blake? Uh, they're there, but I'll kind of get on out the way of them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to watch for the snakes because if he sees a snake, he'll let me know it. Uh, now, I heard you did say earlier that snakes have come up underwater out of the holes oh, before. Yeah. We've, no run, doubt. we've run snakes out of holes and then caught fish in the hole. Yep. Sure have. Wow. And this muddy water, you don't know what. Oh, you I can't. Mean, it's hard it don't to do see. no good to open your eyes because you can't see. Yeah, anyway. you said to get some good video, and I thought, video of what? Muddy hey, water? If you're <laughs> going underwater, take the GoPro, see what we can get. Yeah, we're not yeah. going to get much. Oh, man. Now, how'd y'all get started in this? Well, there's a guy that lived close to us. He's done it his whole life. And we just kind of went with him a few times. He showed us the ins and outs and the do's and don'ts. And we've been doing it ever since. So how long How long's that been? Been about 10 years. 10 years. Yep, yep. Well, that's that's pretty cool. I, I I've got to go once. Uh, some folks uh, took me and we did a little video on it, and I got to go under there. I pulled out a small one, about like that, you yeah, know. So that yeah. was pretty cool. I could yeah. I could open my eyes in the water we were in. We were over at Watts Bar area, but yeah. but this is a little different out here in this muddy water. That's right. That's right. It messes with your nerves a little more. <laughs> now, where do y'all go in West Tennessee? Of course, right here we're on the Hatchie River. We we've been on the Hatchie River from the Mississippi River all the way to 57 Highway. We've done covered it all. Now, this year you've been going on the uh, Fork of Deer a little bit yeah, more because of the water level. That's right. We fish the Fork of Deer and the Tennessee River. Okay. We fish all of them. What's the biggest fish you've ever pulled out? 80 pounds. Wow. Yep. 80 pounds. 80 pounds. What's the average? I mean, do you normally, are we, you finding? Average, most of the years, is between 45 and 55, probably. We catch a lot in that range. Mm hmm Yep. This year has been a little different. The water's been high. It's hard to get to them, you know. Right. We ain't caught as many fish, but caught some good fish, you know. And do you keep them? Or do you let them go? We, we turn loose probably 90%. We eat a few and yeah. few older people around that don't, don't fish anymore. We take them some fish, you know. Oh, that's, that's nice. Yeah. I'm going to say 90% of them we turn loose. I noticed the one in the video, y'all turned it loose and yeah. let it yeah. go and got a few pictures with it and whatnot. But. Yeah. Now, I will say, this is a family event. When they go, yeah. uh, Jonathan's mom and dad will be there. Your sister goes. Yeah. Your wife does it. Yeah, yeah. The whole family does it, yeah. We've had his... His dad, he's went with us. They, we, just a big family event. It's mm -hmm. just a lot of fun. And you know? he took uh, my nephews and my niece a couple years yeah, ago. That was like five years ago we went, four yeah, or five years ago. Yeah, this is the first year that we hadn't took some kids with us just because the water's been high. Yeah. We usually take kids and everything else with us, you know. I guess it could be dangerous. I mean, it can be oh, dangerous. Yeah, there's and... no doubt. It can be dangerous. Well, you know, when the water's up like this, you've got a pretty good current going. And yeah. then you're underwater. Something could hit you. Yep. There's... That's right. And I, when I went with them, I told them, I'm not going under. I will <laughs> do it as long as my head's above water, <laughs> yep. but I'm not taking yep. a breath and going down. Yep. I yep. don't like that. Yep. I'm going to show a few more pictures while we're talking. but uh... Y'all can see the pictures here. Yeah. Um, now, starting out on this, now this is the one y'all caught the day I was with y'all. Yeah. What species are y'all normally catching? Mostly flatheads is usually what we catch. We catch some blues, and we have caught a few channels, but most of them are going to be flathead, you know. That's just... Now, sometimes uh, on some of these pictures that we're showing here, y'all see, um, you'll get two out of the same hole. Yeah, a lot of times at a certain part of the year there, what happens is the male comes in and cleans the hole. He gets it all clean. He leaves and go gets a female, and they go in. She lays her eggs. He runs her off, and he stays and guards the eggs. So he's the, uh, he's the he's the one that does. He's the homemaker. That's right. That's right. <laughs> There's a certain time period there that you'll find two fish in the hole, but most of the time you'll only find one. It'll be the male. Now, one thing that people don't, I guess, realize, but when we were with you that day, you kept saying, "Do you hear him? Oh, Do yeah. you hear it?" You can hear it when the fish when he bites or slaps at you or anything in that hole. He lets off a noise. It sounds, it's like a boom. You can feel it. You can feel it on the bank. It like it rattles the bank, you know. Mm. Blake, what's it sound like when you're underwater? It, um, it, you know he's there. I mean, it's just. <laughs> you, can, you can be standing on the top of the bank or in a boat or anything if you're close and you know he's there. Yep. Because you kept saying that that day, but we couldn't hear. I mean, the, yeah. the some of the background noise will, will kind of drown yeah. it out. But if we went with you. When I was there a couple of years ago, you could hear it right oh, on top. Yeah. And, and yeah. I didn't share, but one of the photos when I was going back through our my photo was looking for stuff the other day. We found a eggs. I don't know if oh, you remember yeah. that. We, yeah. And we had yeah. a picture of it. And I should have included it in there and not think about it. But yeah. uh, you'll see the eggs. And, you know, mm -hmm. if they pull them out, you can pull them yeah. out. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yep. We found a little everything. Do you think the fish goes back to that hole once you let them, let them loose? Oh, yeah. Or? You can go back. You can catch a fish one day and a week later and go back and catch the same fish a lot of times in the same hole. And okay. I, I know we're probably giving away some of your secrets, but... Uh, 
are you are you finding them in, are in inside the bank or are they under a, a, a ramp or they can be under ramps in hollow logs we make boxes you can build a box and put it in the river and sink it and they'll go in that box and use it holes under the bank just anything secluded that he can get back in and guard out of head. the current so we had this discussion out of that locking the current that's yep. right yeah it's got to be out of the current you root wads i mean anything, anything. yeah yeah hmm. that's right so I, I didn't know about the root wads. So you'll go down there and get in between the root wads. I won't. Okay, I started. He this might. Out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not going down in there. No. Yeah. <laughs> but they're there, no that's doubt. Right, that's right. Man, this is some. If you're watching, this is some big fish on these in these pictures. Yeah, that's actually that's one of my nephews from years ago. And look, that one is huge. I mean, yep. it's full that of one, eggs. That one there still got eggs. It hadn't laid yet. That's mm-hmm. why we caught two fish in that hole. She hadn't laid yet. The other day, I, I will say. The times we've gone with you, it's been pretty amazing because I think the first time I went with y'all, we caught five. Yeah, yeah. And then the second time we went, we just caught this one down here. But, yeah. you know, the waters, you yeah. said on the hatchery, has not been right this That's year. That's right. It's been really high this year. We've only been fishing in it about one time. That's when y'all went and we caught one fish. Yep. What, what have you learned kind of maybe fish behavior doing this over the years? Well, the first thing is every time you – take somebody the first thing they say is how strong the fish he is in the water that's just amazes people how strong he can be in the water you know but it's like you said a lot of these fish they use the same hole from year to year we think because you can go and catch the same size fish this year and go back next year and it's real close to the same size maybe a little bigger somewhere mm-hmm. you know but a lot of the fish that's home to them you know but now use. you've started a little project just that's for right. your own curiosity that's right. This year we've started tagging fish. We got a tag, we've got a number, and we got it all wrote down on what they weigh, where they come from, what hole they come out of. That way we can kind of, we'll know more about how far they go and everything. We've caught one fish this year three times, one wow. time in the same hole, and the next time he was seven miles down river in a different hole. Wow. Yep. That's cool. Yep. That's awesome. Yep. So is it just, you just... It's got a little tag. We're tagging them on the back of the fin. Okay. Back there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It'll be interesting to see. Did you just start it this year? Just this year. First so time it'll be done. interesting to see That's what you right. find next That's year because right. you've got the records. I, I, yeah, that'll be cool. Yep. Yeah. That's we might have to do a recap. For. Yeah, we might have yep. to. Yep. So you, you talk about the weight of the the weight of the fish earlier, and you talk about people just yep. surprised at how much fight. I mean, yep. you got eighty pounds jerking on your arm. That's right. I mean, That's right. those are big fish. That's right. You can tell in the video where he was where he went down and got the fish when he come up. He said, "Get me, get me." <laughs> That's what I do. I grab him, take him to the boat. Yeah, I seen you dragging him. Yeah, he can hold the fish, but he can't hold the fish and swim. Right. Somebody's got to get him to the boat, you know. That's another question. How yeah. deep of water are we working in? You, they can, fish can be anywhere from a foot deep to 20 foot deep. It all can be different. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to be swimming 20 foot, are you? Well, we have caught some in 20 foot of water, yeah. Man, not 30 seconds at 20 caught, feet. <laughs> we caught some the other day at, at the Tennessee River. It was high, and we'd throw the anchor of the boat out and swim down the anchor and catch the fish and come back up. No, not, mm. not for me. Yeah. <laughs> I no. like that. It My head's above harder. water. We're real shallow. Yeah, yeah it makes it a lot harder. <laughs> Yep. I've seen in in the pictures in some of these pictures you're wearing wetsuits or yeah now the belt buckle that, oh, yeah. that is is this required <laughs> on the belt buckle in the in this if that's y'all a, are looking at it you'll see he's got a belt buckle that's on that's a requirement mm-hmm. to catch big fish <laughs> that's what it is All right. I asked that's, him that day I was like that's crazy like I want my pants to stay that's, up that's like Blake in his church shoes he, one <laughs> we, one day he didn't have no shoes he he left his shoes at home and what he had was his church shoes on so. <laughs> That's what he wore, and ever since he's been wearing church uh, shoes. Hey, them church shoes work miracles. That's man. Right. <laughs> them church shoes have seen some big fish. Did you pray before you went in there? Yeah. yeah. That's okay. Right, that's right. Well, he probably ought to pray before he shoves him in the water, because <laughs> if you're ever, right. I mean, when you're with them, he just it's like they're just sitting there, and it's like, yeah, just, right. and like, it looks like he's holding him down. Are you yeah, standing on each other? What are y'all doing? What, yeah, a lot of people don't know it, but when he goes down, I'll stand on his back just to hold him there, where he can work and do better. Yeah, because he'll float float that's up. Right, yeah. That's, that's how we communicate. We kind of we feel instead of here more. Right. Than, I don't you know. can't talk under there. Mm-hmm. You don't know what's They do wrong. have a good communication because Blake would be underwater and he would be telling us what's going on and he'd be like, you know, he's hitting my leg and yeah. telling me what's going on. Yeah. And, and and he actually said it, Blake, I, I was saying this, we had multiple cameras that day and on the, I call it the good camera, we didn't catch you saying, yeah. but you did say it on the iPhone. Yeah. We got it. Yeah. You said, he's. I think he's got as it. Soon, as soon as he come out of the hole with him, I felt the fish was rolling in down there. It was hitting me on the leg a little bit. I could feel him fighting around gotcha. so that's when i went to get him then he was done coming up we kind of met in the middle and, yep. and see a lot of times <clears throat> down under these boat ramps or even in holes the fish would get in there and waller out on the hole and it kind of covers up their door they're going in so yep. when you actually get the fish and try to bring him out he'll 
He'll he won't come. He'll it's wedge not, in there. The, it'll wedge. And you have to spend a lot of time yeah. right there trying to get him out and working him. Yep. Now you all do have some specialized tools because I know the day we were there, you would ask for different poles. Yeah. Can we you kind of go into that? It's different lengths is the main thing. Mm-hmm. It's only difference. Every hole is different. You got a lot of holes, like you said, it they they'll water out a hole and you can't just swim in there and get him. You know, you can't fit in there. Mm-hmm. So you take that little pole and you can kind of rake him, make him come up towards the front where he'll get a hold of you or bite or where you can reach him, you know. Now, you caught it blocking in one of them. Uh, yeah. In those pictures, there's like four or five of us all lined up, and yep. you'll block a hole so they yep. can't go out. Some holes may be wider than than one person can block. That was at a boat ramp. Yeah, and if and if if it's not blocked, he like he might come out. You know? Now, I will say, you all ask permission on the boat ramps. Yeah. You most, all always ask permission. Yeah. So most p- most people that that see us around the Tennessee River see us coming and they'll come out there to watch that's <laughs> yeah. what they want well they see, did down know. here yeah yeah the day we pulled that's, up i noticed yeah. there was a couple of guys watching or at least another boat and i thought well, maybe they were with you but well so you, you get an usually, audience well yeah. we did yeah. that day we had we had some of the locals on the yeah, hatchet that right. they will follow them around and watch them and then yeah. when we went up the river here the landowner came out and you know he actually said put it back yeah you yeah. know i want to put oh, back yeah. and he always does but yeah. uh, they wanted to put back because you know it's, that's right that's right we just try to respect them you know i mean and well, that's good because, you know, ask yeah. permission, be yeah. respectful. And yeah. one thing a lot of people don't understand is you have to have a fishing license. That's you right. are fishing. That's right. That's right. Yep. Yep. I guarantee you. Yeah, and, and two people people don't, you know, even creek fishers and stuff, mm-hmm. you're walking on somebody's property, yeah. you, you got to get that permission. Yep. Right. Right. And uh, I know uh, in the first video we did, we went with y'all, everybody was talking about the game wardens with y'all. But, hey, we were – everybody enjoys seeing this. Oh, this yeah. is, this yeah. is, that's this it. is I mean, entertainment. Yeah, that's There's right. a lot of folks at the agency that enjoy, enjoy this sport. Yeah. And some of them call them grabbling, some of them call them noodling. You know, what's hand, all the different terms? Grabbling, hand fishing, noodling, hogging. It's got a lot of different names. It depends on where you're located to what you call it. Kind of a much. regional. Yeah, yeah. That's well, you were saying is. something about, is it Oklahoma? Yeah, Oklahoma is, is known for noodling. Okay. Yeah. Arkansas, that way, is kind of where the hogging come in. And hand fishing is just kind of thrown in the middle of all of it. Is it because of Arkansas Razorbacks? Is that how they got hogging? It may be, yeah. <laughs> Now, I will say, uh, you, you go down to Mississippi, too, and fish some a little bit, don't you? No, we don't ever go. You don't down there? No, okay, no, I thought you did. We haven't right. been down there. No. We, most, most of everything we fish is Tennessee. Okay. Yep. Mainly mainly West Tennessee waters. Yeah. Anything, yeah. any funny stories or anything good from, from when you're doing this? Uh, we've had a lot of encounters with everything. <laughs> it's like Blake, he went down, was checking a, checking a hole and stuff there, and he come up and said something got me. I said, what is it? He was trying to come out of the water, and he couldn't come out of the water. A trot line had him. Yeah, that's, wow. That's another danger. Trot lines is probably yep. the worst thing that yeah. you could get hung on. A lot of people just put out trot lines, just leave them, and don't go back. And yes, get that's anything. And then you know. Yeah. From the from my career as an officer, that is one thing that we've ran into yep. years and years, especially out here on the rivers or yep. on the lakes. Limb lines and trot lines, yep. they just leave them. They don't, don't tag them. Yeah. They leave them, and right. and we're cutting them down, and we're we're taking them out but you don't realize how many are actually there bunch. until yeah. you're that's right that's I mean, what we do we get in the water and go down the bank we might go down the bank for miles we f- we see nets we found everything you know hmm. we found all kind of things it's just left you know yeah they lose them or don't know where they're at or what i don't know but there'd be a lot of stuff in there you know so have you ever run into any traps like the uh you know, people set traps on the on the edges of the banks, the rivers and stuff. You ever got we any had, of the others? We ain't never seen any traps no. or anything like that. We ain't never encountered anything like that. You and, know? and I know somebody's going to ask because we did the thing on the turtles. Any, y'all ever ran into a turtle in one of these holes? Because that's the number one thing we get. Well, what about the turtles? Okay. And I know it yeah. crossed my mind when yeah. I was doing that. I don't want to run my hand in here and there'll be a snapping turtle a in snapper there. snapper will get you. Yeah, we ain't never had any turtle encounters that we know of. It's, ain't no telling what we've touched and didn't know what we've touched. But they just, yeah. That's right, you know. I guess could there be – what's some of the other fish, if any, that would be in that hole? I've heard people catching, like, carp and stuff like that in okay. boxes and stuff like that. I guess they just go in there and wander in there, you know. Mm-hmm. I've heard people catching brim and bass and everything, but we had never caught anything other than a catfish in ours. Have you ever um, chased one out from another side of a hole? Can the hole be – It can be d- different holes. It yeah, can no be doubt. It can be two or three different holes leading to the same bed. Okay, like, yeah. like a tunnel to, kind of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of times we'll find a hole, and we'll go, before we ever even check it, we'll go around and make sure there's no other holes to block first. I've seen okay. them do that on the Blocking. river you bank, because you yeah. said yeah. that uh, yeah. a lot of times the beaver or muskrat, oh, yeah. you think that's what they're yeah, a lot on of the times, banks. A lot of the holes that we catch fish out of, we it could possibly be where 
something else had dug the hole or anything and the catfish comes in and takes over that hole and starts using it you know yeah yep all right how long do you typically hold your breath at least as possible try to yeah, yeah. 30 sec 30 seconds is gonna yeah. max it probably. yeah if somebody's if somebody's down there 30 seconds you better go get them mm-hmm. yeah something's going on okay yeah. you, I, are you thinking man if he just had three more seconds he'd probably get that oh yeah i thought that a bunch of times a bunch of times i'd have to turn him loose and push him back in the hole just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't worry about him getting in the air <gasps> yeah that's right, that's right come up quick air go back down yeah, you got him yeah a lot of times we'll tag team he'll go down and start doing something and i'll come up and we'll go back and forth you know that way we like if we have to dig the hole out to get the fish out of it a lot of mm-hmm. times like he'll, he'll cover up the hole and i guess i never can, thought about doing that but i guess yeah, that, yeah you can get a hold to the fish but he won't come out so we have to alternate holding the fish and digging with one hand you know it's a lot of different ways to do things we've caught some fish in one hole and put a stringer through him but he won't come out of that hole and you'll have to go out somewhere else and figure out where he come in at to get him out of it hmm. yeah Yep. How far have you gone in a hole? All the way. You got your whole gym. body's been oh, yeah. in a hole. No, yeah. no, no, oh, no, yeah. no, no. A lot of <laughs> leg first now. A lot. Of, <laughs> oh, a lot, really? Okay. A lot of a lot of holes. People's amazed how big they really are. You can go in a lot of these holes, just like say feet first, and you can go in and open your legs and can't touch the sides of the walls. We got 15, 20 foot poles you can stick in there. And can't touch the back of them. Well, I know they've done that under a boat ramp. Oh, I yeah. think it was on the Tennessee River Probably, we did it, and yeah. you could not oh, reach yeah. the back of the hole. Yeah. So, and I was amazed yeah. with that. But yeah. you've gone all the way in. Oh yeah. Head first. Yeah, both ways. <sighs> yeah, that's right. Uh, you think the hole might cap? Be afraid the hole cave in on me. Yeah, man. you have to watch some of these holes. A lot. You don't want people standing on the top of the bank up exactly. there everywhere because if it yeah. does cave in, you're in a mess. You know. Oh, that's you're, right. You're more of a mess. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh man. Well, any advice on any if somebody wants to wants to go, what was the first? Yeah, just don't go the, do this by yourself. <laughs> oh no, the main thing you need to find somebody that can teach you something. You don't need to just go jump in the water and start thinking you're gonna catch a fish. You don't. That's not the way to do it. It's 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 a lot dangerous. We we we've been doing it a while, and it's like the guy that taught us. He taught us a lot of things to look for, to know about things. You know. They still make me nervous when I'm watching them. Yeah. Yeah. The the main thing I think if you want to try it for yourself. Is to make sure whatever you're messing with is completely underwater. You don't want a hole that's got air in it or something like that because that's where something's bad gonna be. Something that's where your you know, snakes snake. Snakes he's got to breathe. The catfish ain't got to right. breathe. That's right. Yeah. I never thought of. I, you're exactly tip. right. I never thought about that. But yeah. that that's a good point because yeah. if it's got an air air pocket inside yeah. it, then you're that's gonna danger. have a turtle or yeah. you're gonna have a snake. Yeah. You're gonna have something else in there. Now Blake uh, will wear gloves, but you said. They, they tear you up. You get like a, you start itching. I don't know what, it, I guess I'm allergic to the bite or something. I don't, I don't know what it is. He was they, talking about, I'm itching, I'm itching. It'll make my hands whelp up, yeah. even through gloves. Yeah. Now, I wear the gloves because they they will tear you up. They've yeah. got oh, teeth. Yeah, they They'll will. tear you up. That's, if, you, if you just get in the water and catch one fish, it's not all that bad. But if you stay in the water all day, your hands get pruned and get soft. Right. And that fish, will, he'll just, he'll rip your hand but to pieces, you're, thinking, you know? you're making me think of an old Saturday Night Live skit. Yeah, <laughs> you start yeah, talking, my hands yeah, are all pretty. Yeah, but anyway, that's yeah. another story. <laughs> Classic Saturday Night yeah, Live. Yeah, yeah. A lot um, of wasted time there for me. I know yeah. when I went, I used gloves because I, I mean, yeah, yeah. just. But I think all the guys were yeah. at that I mean, point. You know, but. Unless you just want your hands tore up, yeah. I mean, you right. can prevent it. You know, that's right. Yeah. Now y'all will wear wetsuits. Uh, we well, used to not wear wetsuits, but we froze. Too. That's right. <laughs> it was the earlier it is. Catfish spawn between 65 and 75 degree water. That's when they start spawning. When the water gets that temperature, they start coming up looking for holes to, to spawn in. Mm-hmm. The water's still cold, say 70 degrees there. That's that's it gets cold, you know. So we started wearing wetsuits, and it just it makes it a lot funner because you ain't got to worry about the cold water. Like he always he's freezing to death. He would oh. freeze. You'd see him. He'd be out in the water for a little while, and then he would go up there and lay out on a boat ramp or a rock <laughs> or something to, to warm, look like a lizard. You, you know? could literally see little Cold waves blooded, you gotta go, out. Yeah, gotta I mean, go yeah, sun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you you say you wear wear suits because it's cold. Uh, yeah. What times? I mean, are you are you doing this in colder times of year too? Or we, we, it what? starts during May and May. goes through okay. August. Somewhere okay. in there, sometimes right. earlier, sometimes later. You and know? you were telling us the other day that you'll move with the rivers because yeah. some rivers are a little bit cooler That's than right. the others. That's right. Mm-hmm. Some waters warm up quicker. You say take like Pickwick. Pickwick's gonna warm faster than the Hatchie River because it's not moving like right. like not the current. Slow. You know that's mm-hmm. right. So you can kind of move with the water 
to keep stay with the fish, you know. Yeah. Hmm. Little things we just learned, you know. Yep. Wow. Um, now your sister does it and yep. she's been doing it since I think the first time we went, she's yeah. how old? Now? She's, she's she's twelve now and she's been doing it ever since she could have floaties on just about i remember when she was <laughs> yeah, here the first yeah. year she had like little floaties on yeah, it and she yeah, had her little life yeah. jacket on was out there filling yeah. around yeah. so she caught one this year that weighed 46 pounds she you, was tickled to death. you had that one on facebook because yeah, yeah. I, I was trying to steal the video off your facebook page but i couldn't get it because yeah. that would have been a good one because yeah. uh, it, it yeah, yeah she, she was i caught one i caught yeah, one <laughs> yeah, yeah she was tickled to death i think a life jacket is a good idea yeah but yeah. but you can't go you can't under, go under that's so right, that's right I tell you what, it's been an interesting uh, few minutes here. I, I do have to it. say thanks to Alan Baker at Baker, Gla Baker Glass in Bolivar for letting us use your cabin today to have the backdrop here. That has, I think, made the setting. Uh, it's a lot more fun to be outside when we're talking about yep. fishing. So. Yep. Yep. And real quick before we close, any advice uh, if anybody wants to go, would you take them? Yeah, we don't mind taking people and showing them things. You know, we don't show them. We don't show a lot of people our. Good best, host. Our best stuff, you know, but yeah. You'll introduce them to that's it. Right, and, that's right, yeah. And uh, teach them how to get yep. started. Later. And he has taken quite a, I don't, I've, I've known y'all take, yeah. yeah you, we've took a lot of people off and on through the years, yeah. I know my nephews have been begging to go again. Yeah, yeah. They would love to do it again. Yeah. So. Anytime, they're welcome. We'll All take right. my son next year. He's small. We, we can get him in those holes. We, we can use him as bait. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, hey. Thank you guys for being here. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, enjoyed our time here in, in Bolivar, Tennessee on the Hatchie. And mm -hmm. thanks Appreciate for having setting us. this up. Hey, yeah. you're welcome. You're welcome. And uh, we'll uh, see y'all next time on Tennessee Wildcast. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Stay connected with TWRA by visiting our website at tnwildlife.org. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hey, it's all about Tennessee wildlife. It's what we do. Tennessee Wildcast will be on the air again next week. We'll see you then.